President Andrew Jackson, and the Manatee are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is March 27th, 2024. It is the 87th day of the year. Wow, we're almost three months into this. There are 279 days left in 2024. This is one of those years that seems to be flying pretty fast. I really miss, you know, being a broke, like, college student or private in the Army. The days seem to last a lot longer, and the years went a lot slower. Now that I'm older and relatively happy, the days and years seem to fly by pretty quick. Today is the 13th Wednesday in the 13th week and the 9th day of spring. You got 86 days left until summer. Today is National Manatee Appreciation Day. Gentle giants of the sea, these lovable creatures spend their days munching on seagrass and swimming in crystal clear waters. The manatee I find very interesting. It's huge, it looks scary if you don't know about them, but they're really harmless. They don't have any natural predators, so they've never never really developed anything that would be used in defense. I just saw a video the other day where a girl was snorkeling or whatever in Florida and a manatee came up and rested its head right up against her and then put its little flippers around her leg like a hug type thing. I thought it was really interesting. And during the thing, she kept her hands to herself because it's illegal to touch or pet one or anything like that. You could let it do whatever it wants to do, you just can't return the hug or something. Since they have no predators either, they don't mind coming up to humans. They sort of remind me of, there's, I saw it on Survivor, that TV show. On one of the islands, this lake used to be part of the ocean, but it was cut off from the sea and there was some jellyfish left over. Now there's millions of these jellyfish inside this lake, but since they have no predators inside the lake, they lost their ability to, to sting people. So on Survivor, they got to go swim with them and they're swimming right through them and touching them. It was really interesting. All right, let's see what else March 27th has given us. 1866, President of the United States, Andrew Johnson, vetoes the Civil Rights Act of 1866. His veto is overridden by Congress, and the bill is passed into law on April 9th. That doesn't happen too often, but a president can veto a bill or whatever Congress and the Senate put forward. He could put his stamp on. Well, then it goes back to them. If they can get a certain amount, and I think it's like three quarters of the Congress to vote on it, they could override his veto. I think that's good. Checks and balances. I think we need checks and balances on the Supreme Court, because if you think about it, Congress could do something, Senate can do something, the president can override them. Now, if the president is insane and whatever he's doing is just nuts, they have the ability to override him. But the Supreme Court doesn't have anything like that. They're there for life, if they want to be, and when they make a decision, that's it. 1912, First Lady Helen Taft and Vice Countess Chinda, I hope that's pronounced right, wife of Japanese ambassador, plant two cherry trees on the northern bank of the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. This is the origin of the National Cherry Blossom Festival. That is a really interesting thing. It is beautiful. It's one of those things, if you're a photographer, you want to make it to Washington, D.C., the monuments are nice, but if you can get the cherry blossoms when they're blooming, oh my God, that's a great picture. Look at these. The cherry blossom trees are without a doubt the stars of springtime in Washington, D.C. Visit the district during this time and you'll find that the nation's capital is accented in pink for the National Cherry Blossom Festival, which takes place from March 20th to April 14th. That was in 2024. The endeavor to introduce cherry blossom trees to Washington, D.C. began decades before the official planting. In 1885, Eliza Skidmore returned from Japan and proposed the idea of planting cherry trees along the Potomac River's waterfront to the U.S. Army Superintendent of the Office of Public Buildings and Grounds. I am glad they changed that name. Imagine trying to explain that to people. What do you do? Well, I'm the superintendent of the Office of the Public Building and Grounds Department. Anyway, despite facing initial rejection, Skidmore persisted in advocating for the idea over the next 24 years. During this period, several cherry trees found their way into the region, one which became the site of the 1905 cherry blossom viewing and tea party hosted by Skidmore, botanist David Fairchild, and his fiancée Marion, daughter of Alexander Graham Bell. In 1906, David Fairchild imported 1,000 cherry trees from Japan, planting them on his property in Chevy Chase, Maryland. Pleased with the outcome, the Fairchilds began promoting Japanese cherry trees as an idea for Washington's avenues. 
By 1908, Fairchild had donated cherry saplings to D.C. schools for Arbor Day. An Arbor Day event, he proposed transforming the Speedway into the fields of cherries. In 1909, Skidmore initiated a fundraising campaign to purchase cherry trees for the district. Following a letter exchange from First Lady Helen Taft, who supported the idea. Plans were set in motion to create an avenue of cherry trees, enhancing the beauty of the capital. Now, while all this was going on, by chance, a Japanese chemist who had actually discovered adrenaline was in Washington. The Japanese consul in New York City on April 8th informed him of a plan to plant Japanese cherry trees along the speedway, which is now Ohio Avenue, and the chemist asked if, if Miss Taft would accept an additional 2,000 trees. She accepted the over 2,000 trees. A couple years later, First Lady Taft and the Japanese Vice Countess planted the first tree on the banks of the Potomac River. 1975, the construction of the transatlantic pipeline system begins. 1998, the Food and Drug Administration approves Viagra for use as a treatment for erectile dysfunction, the first pill to be approved for this condition in the United States. It started off as a heart medication that they were experimenting with. After the study of this heart medication was done, they noticed that a lot of the older gentlemen who had been in the study were calling to see if they could get some of that medication. The people studying the drug started asking why, and they found out. 1999, the Kosovo War, an American Lockheed F-117A Nighthawk, which is also known as the Stealth Fighter, is shot down by a Yugoslav Army SAM surface-to-air missile, the first and only Nighthawk to be lost in combat. Premiered on this day, 1992, White Men Can't Jump. This movie starred Woody Harrelson and Wesley Snipes as street ball hustlers, basketball players that usually played games at parks for money. Rosie Perez was also in this. I think that's the first time I ever noticed her as anyone, you know? What's funny is the whole time, Rosie Perez plays like the girlfriend and she's kind of a ditz, but she's actually really smart and she's studying to go on Jeopardy and in the movie, she finally gets on Jeopardy and she does really well. But the movie itself was a pretty good movie. It was really interesting. They tried to remake it in 2023. Yeah, don't watch that. Like if you're in the dentist and they're playing it on the TV, turn away. It's that bad. Born on March 27th, 1975, Fergie. Born Stacy Ann Ferguson. She's known for being the lead singer of the Black Eyed Peas, the group that released the single Where Is The Love. She released her solo album, The Duchess, in 2006. She played the voice of Sally in two Peanut cartoons and was a spelling bee champion and a Girl Scout. I like the Black Eyed Peas. That was a pretty good band. Died on March 27, 2002. We lost Dudley Moore. Ah, oh, he was great. Fun-loving British actor who appeared in the movie 10, Arthur, and who wrote Beyond the Fringe. He was also in a movie called Crazy People in 1990, which was an excellent movie. It was so funny. He was in Arthur 2, Blame It on the Bellboy, Best Defense, which was another good movie, Unfaithfully Yours. I, you know, a lot of people liked it. I didn't think it was that good. And Love Sick. Love Sick was pretty good. Sadly, he had fallen on hard times. He'd always been a heavy drinker. And towards the end of his life, he had a housekeeper that had, they'd become friends. And when he was on his way out, he went to live with her and lived with her family. It's like he was getting off a of surgery or something. So he came to stay with her so she could help him. And after a time, he'd still been there. She said, you know, you got to leave. So he bought the house next door so she could still help him out. And eventually he passed away there. Dudley Moore died on March 27, 2002 from pneumonia. He had some other issues going on. He was only 66 years old. Rena Frucher, who was his housekeeper and friend, was holding his hand when he died. She reported his final words were, I can hear music all around me. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day. Be nice to each other.